What's up, Abby fam? How's everybody doing today? What's good, everybody? How's everybody's week starting off? Hope everybody's happy, healthy, safe, prosperous. Hope your plants are doing well. What's up, Waco? Welcome to the live stream, everybody. Real quick, I'll go over the products, touch on the app. Very organic. What's good, Spencer? What's up, H? <clears throat> what up, Phil? Hey, hey, hey. Lovely. I hate, I love to see that, Wyatt. Excuse me, not hate to see. I love to see that, Wyatt. All right, so uh, just real quick, going over the products. I'm just going to touch on them briefly, go over the app, how they kind of operate quickly for those of uh, those users who are in here who are considering buying Abby. Um, our flagship product, the product that we first brought to market was the Hey Abby OG edition. Sorry, the boxes are listening as usual. Uh, was the Hey Abby OG edition. Uh, the OG edition is a <clears throat> fully incorporated grow space. It is a hydroponic deep water culture growing setup. Um, has everything you need to operate a, a grow from you know seed to harvest, clone to harvest, however you choose. Um, it uses a very powerful Samsung LM30H, 301H um, Samsung diode, which is really strong for, for, for growing plants. Um, it uses an algorithm to control the intake and exhaust fans, help control the environment, keep the environment optimal. Um, it uses water sensors to display the water level and temperature um, on the dial as well as the app. The OG Edition has a screen display dial, which like I said, it gives you the environmental temperature, the environmental humidity, as well as your water temperature. It tells you what's going on with the light, if the light's on or off. It also tells you the time of day outside by a, a little symbol. That's pretty cool. Um, it's a really great box. Uh, it's said to yield between uh, about five and eight ounces on average. Uh, about a year later, we came out with the 420 edition, which is a little more affordable of a box. Um, it is very similar to the OG edition. It's a fully incorporated automated uh, hydroponic deep water culture box. Uh, it uses a slightly different light. It uses a Everlight uh, growing or yeah, Everlight, Everlight growing systems um, light. It's a little bit different of a spectrum, but also works great for you know growing plants. Um, the light is a little bit less powerful than the OG light. Um, it uses the same components, intake exhaust fan to control the environment. Um, there is a few less sensors in the 420 than the OG box. Um, we created the 420 box to have a basically lower entry point, um, lower entry price point, make it easier, more afford affordable for more people to get into growing their own cannabis. Both the OG and the 420 box have a five volt USB plug that allow you to plug in any accessory you may choose whether it be our humidifier, our fan, which you see here, um, as well as and or the bud cam, which allows you to view your plant anytime you're away. Um, and the fan and humidifier also make it really easy to control the environment, really optimize it for growing your plant. Um, <clears throat> recently, we came out with the release, the, the black edition. Um, this is the most powerful kind of pro, pro grower style box. Um, like I said, it's the most powerful. It has an upgraded Samsung light. The light also incorporates infrared and UV spectrums into it. Um, that's one of the major, major differences. Um, also, the Black Edition houses a three-port USB hub, which allows you to use uh, multiple accessories in the box, whereas the OG and 420, you can only use one. Um, the dial is a bit upgraded as well. Um, it's It has a newer mascot. I believe it's a higher pixel ratio um, than the OG. Unfortunately, the 420 does not have a um, display dial or a viewing window. Those are some of the other differences between the 420 and the OG and or Black Edition box. All three boxes operate, operate off of an app, which is really cool. There's a lot of really cool features within the app. Um, uh, one being the calendar section, which is really great. Uh, it reminds you and teaches you how to do tasks to the plant, when to change the water, train and or trim the plant. Uh, like I said, it not only reminds you when to do it, but also walks you through the steps on how to do so. Um, so that's one really cool feature. We also have a log feature incorporated into the app, which allows you to log anytime you do anything to the plant, even if you just want to, you know, update uh, your log with a picture that we can kind of track progress and or go, go back and view, you know, your whole um, growing process or growth cycle to kind of duplicate um, your, your success in future grows. Uh, we also have a trend section, which is a really cool portion of the app that's uh, basically a social media platform 
allows you to post pictures and interact with other Abbey growers, kind of chop it up with like-minded people, get advice and or, you know, give advice. Um, probably the most advanced and most utilized feature within the app is probably the one-on-one -on -one grow support, which is also part of the subscription that we offer. Um, the subscription comes with all the growing supplies needed, um, a grow basket, collar, um, nutrients, as well as a one-on-one -on -one grow support. So the subscription is really cool because you don't have to go out and search for reputable brand nutrients and or coming up with, come up with a feeding schedule, try to find, you know, disposable materials like the basket, the carbon filters, et cetera. Um, it all just gets shipped to your door every three months, which is, you know, very, very convenient. Um, it saves a lot of headache and kind of guesswork or, you know, critical thinking that you have to do to plan things out like that. Um, like I said, part of the subscription is the grow support, which is a messaging um, function within the app where you can just tap the message button and you're instantly connected to growers um, like myself. I personally have 14 years of growing experience. Um, I have a lot of knowledge of agronomy and plant nutrition, plant science, botany, et cetera. Um, I've grown almost every way you can imagine. So I have a good foundational background to help you guys and help optimize your grows. Answer any questions you may have, you know, or you want to learn thing, different things about the plant or any concerns you may have with your plant. So it's really cool. It really kind of separates us from using a grow tent or growing any other way. Um, what It's one thing that really separates and advances Abbey above all other um, companies or methods of growing. So it's really cool. That's basically, you know, the overall picture of, hey, Abbey, our products and kind of how things function and work here. Um, today, I did want to get into harvesting, um, curing, or drying and or curing your flowers. Um, there, I see a lot of people kind of struggling with it or they dry too fast or end up with issues um, drying and or curing their plants. So I want to get into that today. Uh, once I go through that, then I'll answer any growing questions you may have. Um, if I, you know, if you already asked a growing question, um, when I'm done going through how to harvest and different techniques of harvesting, drying and curing, um, put your question in again and I will be able to answer your question. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you guys before I get started with this was a sale that we're having which is a spring, bake, spring break sale, um, which is when you purchase uh, two Hay Abbeys or more, you get $100 off. So that's one really cool way to save yourself some money, especially a lot of people now are, are purchasing um, the 420 with multiple, they're buying multiple at one time, which is really cool a way to kind of perpetuate your grow or have multiple harvests um, if you need a larger quantity of flour. So um, cool way to save yourself, um, you know, 100 bucks. Uh, we do have a, an exclusive discount code for you guys today. It's pinned at the top of the chat. You guys can see that. Save yourself $30 um, uh, off, you know, grow box purchase as well. So harvesting, drying, and curing um, is often probably the most overlooked facet of cannabis cultivation and or growing. Um, and because it's often overlooked, people frequently mess it up. It's, it's something that's really easy to mess up and it can ruin you know, the previous 13 to 15 weeks of time, effort, and love you put into your plant in a matter of, you know, five to seven days. So um, it's really crucial to, to dry your plant, prop, plant properly. When you're drying the plant, not only are you removing all the moisture from the plant and flowers, but more importantly, or as important, I should say, is you're allowing the chlorophyll within the plant to break down. And chlorophyll is the phytochemical or chemical within the plant that keeps it green and allows it to photosynthesize and use light energy properly. Um, if that chlorophyll doesn't, isn't able to break down properly, uh, most of the time if it's dried too fast, um, the chlorophyll isn't allowed to break down properly and your flowers are gonna end up having a real grassy green or like barn smell, kind of a hay grassy smell and taste. And it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a lot less enjoyable than what it should be in the end. Um, so in order to dry your, your plant properly, especially within the Hay Abbey, the key is to try to keep it, the box at 60% humidity and 60 degrees. It's, you know, uh, I'm sure some of you who are familiar with Discord or remember the Discord have seen Alexander Rostaman, right? Um, he's a really great moderator, has a pretty good foundational knowledge of growing. Uh, he says, it's like really good barbecue. You got to take drying low and slow. And that's the truth. Um, you should be drying your plant between seven and 10 days. Um, to allow that slow dry and allow the chlorophyll to break down properly. Um, 60 degrees is kind of hard to, you know, to get the box at 60 degrees. That is pretty cold. So try to keep it as close as 60 degrees as you can, um, as well as 60% humidity. Um, that's 
pretty attainable. Um, one way you can easily control the humidity is by adjusting the stock exhaust or fan settings for drying mode. Um, you know, go to the environment tab and you'll see the fans are typically on auto mode. If you turn them off of auto, you can adjust the fan settings. Um, personally, for my conditions and when I dry here in Southern California, you know, it's a bit warmer. Um, I typically have the intake fan off completely. You don't want any air blowing directly onto the plant. Um, it's just going to cause a uh, wicking of the moisture and remove the moisture much faster than it needs to. You don't need to use any auxiliary fans like our smart fan or anything like that. Um, if you simply just put the exhaust fan to level two or level one, typically I have it at level one, it'll keep it right at 60% humidity. And humidity is something that when you're drying, you're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, you can't just kind of set it and forget it. Um, you want to check on it a couple times a day and either lower or raise the the exhaust fan level accordingly you know if it's above 60 percent or it's above 65 percent i would turn it up a level um if it's below say 55 percent, then i would turn it down a level or even off completely i've had multiple harvests where i have my exhaust fan off completely for the you know for almost the whole duration of the drying period um, so it's crucial to try to keep your box really cool and humid around 60 degrees with 60% humidity. Like I said, that'll keep it low and slow and allow that chlorophyll to properly break down while the moisture is being expunged or, or wicked from the flowers. Um, so once your plants, you know, kind of dried, you're going to want to go into, I know I'm kind of going backwards. I'll go into harvesting once I get through the curing thing, but just the drying is the most crucial part of it. Really harvesting is fairly easy. There's just some different techniques you can use. So once your, your flowers are dry, you're going to want to put them into a vessel. Um, I see a lot of people using mason jars. Mason jars are really great for curing your flower. Um, there's only one issue with mason jars is that they're clear um, and you want to use a dark sealed container, something where light can't get in. Um, if light get, gets in, it's really, especially once the, the plants or flowers are dried, it's going to degrade the trichomes and all the cannabinoids really quickly. And whether that just be regular house lights or sunlight, it's just going to degrade it much more rapidly than um, you're going to want it to. So first thing with curing is make sure you put it in a sealed, uh, tightly sealed jar or bag that has, you know, a double zip seal on it, um, really strong, durable seals or a jar that's dark and has a good seal as well. Um, you're going to want to keep it in a dry, cool place like a cabinet or, you know, somewhere that's away from light and or warm temperatures. Um, I see some people trying to cure their flowers in the fridge, which is a no, no. Um, when you put things in the fridge, it's going to, uh, you know, condense water on the outside and or inside of the jar, and it's going to add extra moisture to your flowers. And that's not something you want. So typically like a cupboard or a drawer or somewhere that's dark, cool, and dry is the best place to cure your flowers. Um, to cure flowers, you're basically just going to be, um, burping the jar, which is basically just, you know, opening up the jar, kind of toss the flowers around a little bit um, and let it off gas any moisture or anything that's it's expelled from the flowers um, and just leave it open for like five, 10 minutes um, and then close it back up. Um, once a day is fine. Two a days, twice a day is optimal. If you can burp that your jars twice a day, it's, you know, it's better to do so. Um, after you cure for about, I personally cure for about a week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, it's just hard to, you know, keep, keep off or keep your hands off of the flowers when you pretty much have a finished product that you want to use. So I think that uh, between a week and two weeks is plenty of curing. Um, ideally, you know, you want to cure the flowers for about three weeks or so um, to really let those terpenes have full expression and flavonoids and all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, it's hard to wait that long, especially when you already have a finished plant. And usually by that time you have another plant growing. So I typically cure for about a week roughly, um, and then you know it's ready to use. Um, as far as harvesting goes, there are many different techniques and ways to harvest the plant. Um, I'm just gonna walk you through my personal steps and kind of explain to you why I like doing um, harvesting this way. Um, I personally will cut the whole plant down from the main stock, lop it off, um, then I will empty the reservoir, obviously. I'll pull the whole reservoir out, and I'll set the trellis up about halfway up the box. So about right here, about three quarters of the way, I should say, about right here. I don't want it up here. I don't want it down low. I like to keep it right here. That way the middle of the branches are right near the, um, the or I should say, the humidity sensor and temperature sensor is right in the middle of the branches. Um, if you put it too high or too low, it's not gonna give you an accurate humidity reading. So you want that humidity sensor, which is right near your USB plug, 
or the locking mechanism on the door, it's in that same position. You want that humidity sensor to be about halfway um, or a little bit lower than halfway on the branches. Um, so I'll cut the plant down, set the trellis up, and then I'll cut all the branches off of the main stalk. And I try to keep the branches in similar length. That way I have everything drying um, as a similar sized unit. You know, you want everything to dry together. Um, so I'll cut off the branches. And typically when you cut the branches off, I like to um, basically cut it from the main stalk. So I won't cut the branch off the main stalk. I'll cut the main stalk to remove the branch. And what you'll end up with is like kind of uh, a gun shape or a hanger shape like this. And that allows you to perfectly hang the branch onto the trellis like that. Um, you don't want to space it out a lot. You don't want to have any um, big gaps in between branches. You want to try to keep things uniform and kind of tightly packed. You don't want them smushed together, but they should be, you know, the leaves should be touching. Um, so once I have everything hung, you're pretty much harvested and ready to proceed to drying. Um, that's kind of the method that I like to use. Um, the reason I like doing that is because when you decide to cut all the buds off and use a drying rack, first of all, you're handling the buds a lot. You have to handle the buds to put them into the drying rack. You have to handle the buds when you cut them. You have to handle the buds to turn them around when they're in the drying rack. You also have to handle the buds when you test for dryness. The, the more times you handle it, the more trichomes and cannabinoids you're removing from the plant. You'll notice if you handle the plant a lot, you're going to have what's called hash fingers, right? Where you get trichomes all over your fingers and or gloves, um, which should be remaining on the plant. So ideally, once the plant's harvested or during harvesting and hanging and drying, you want to handle the plant least as possible. That's ideal. You want to handle the plant um, very much at all. So in doing so, you know, when I cut the branches off, I'm not touching the flowers. And then when I hang it, it allows me to do something called the snap test, um, which is basically a test where you um, bend the branch. You find a branch of medium thickness and you're going to give it a hard like 90 degree bend right between your finger, thumb and middle finger to kind of give it a hard bend. Once you hear that audible snap, then um, it's pretty much done drying. You want to test, you know, multiple branches. Um, once you get a consistent snap, audible snap noise, you're ready to trim and or move into the curing stage. Um, when you do that in a drying rack, or if you cut down to individual buds, you kind of have to pick the buds up or flowers and squeeze them to see how firm they feel. Um, if they feel still, if they still feel squishy, they have a lot, they still have moisture and have more time to go. Um, as well as, you know, when using a drying rack, you kind of have to toss or turn over the flowers frequently. So they, one, they don't get flat spots and two, so they dry evenly. So you don't have, you know, half the flowers dried and the other half is still really moist. Like I said, in doing so, you're handling the plant quite a bit and you're removing those valuable trichomes that everybody would rather consume than have stuck on their fingers and or gloves. So that's how I go about harvesting. Um, I really like using the trellis, hanging from the trellis, hanging my branches from the trellis and using the snap test. That's a, a one really easy, sure way to tell, you know, your, your dryness level and to really dry things uniformly. So that's my harvest process, how I go about drying and or curing. Um, you can, you know, very easily apply these techniques to your own grow. And I hope that, you know, it helps benefit those people who are drying. Um, I've seen a lot of people, like I said, kind of waste away their 13 to 15 weeks of hard work and effort, time and love they put into their plant just because they improperly dried their plant for, you know, the first five days. And it has that real green grassy smell. And once, you know, you dry out too quickly, it's really hard to revert back. You can bring moisture back into the flowers or into the buds, but um, when you dry quickly like that, the trichom trichomes and flavonoids, they degrade very, very quickly at, you know, just barely warm temperatures. So um, try to implement, you know, the tips and techniques I've given you into your drying process. That being said, um, let's check out some of these questions you guys have. Scroll back up. Let's see. What up, Boondocks? What up, Papa Pete? What's up, David? What's up, Coco? If you guys have any questions, type them down into the chat. Um, don't forget to use that code today. Um, save yourself $30. It's pinned at the top of the chat. The code is 0227LIVE30. It's today only. It's only good till midnight. Also, don't forget we're having that spring break sale where if you uh, purchase two or more Abbey, uh, 420 edition Abbeys, then you save yourself $100. So that's a, another really cool thing. Save you guys self some money. All right, let's get started here. We'll start with uh, Max. What's good, my G? What's up, bruh? 
Wyatt, what's my opinion on Grove bags? Wyatt, you know, I've never used the specific brand of Grove bags, but I have used the same product from a different, I think it was a no name brand. Um, I got a bunch of sample bags like that um, of a new company that was starting up. I don't think they ever got off the ground, but I got dumped off. I think it was like a hundred drying bags of different sizes. And I use them. I like them a lot. Um, they're really easy to use. They had a really good seal. That's like the big thing to keep an eye on when you're using a bags to dry is the seal. Um, you want a really heavy duty seal that snaps when you know you zip it closed and even two zip seals if they have it. Um, but the bags I use were really great. I've heard really things, really good things about Grove bags. So those are great for, um, for curing. Yeah. What's up, Wesley G? What's up, Jerome? What up, Necky Scott? Jerome, yeah, the snap test is the best. Absolutely, I love it. What up, Israel Carnes? Awesome, I help. I'm glad to help, Israel. Natty Phil, appreciate your info. Answer my CP. A couple of my questions are already asked. What's up, Phil? Necky Scott, what is the best way to start the plant? Um, Necky Scott, if you're talking about like whether from clean clone or seed, um, I personally prefer clone, uh, just quicker, a little more reliable, um, saves you time and you kind of know what you're getting when you buy a clone. Um, with seeds, you know, even if you get the same strain within a batch of batch of like 10 seeds, usually you buy, there's going to be a lot of genetic variance between those 10 seeds. So um, I prefer clones personally. Phil, my girl's dad bought the Abbey a couple of days ago. Got him on the live today. Let's go. Let's grow. That's right, Phil. Let's grow. What's up, Phil's father-in-law, I guess you could call it. I don't know if they're married, but what's up, Phil's girl's dad? I'm Grower J. I'm Jake. Welcome to the community. OG Bands 410. Where can I order some seeds from? Um, just Google online, man. Sue Seed Bank. Pretty easy. There's a bunch of good reputable ones out there. A-Y, I seem to be drowning my germinating seed. How can I get from drowning it? I'm on my fourth seed. Um, A-Y, so you're, if you're drowning out the seed, you may need to reduce the level of water in the seed cup. Um, that's honestly the most common thing I see is people have the water like covering the seed or like three quarters of the way up. Um, you only need it about a half the way up the seed cube. Um, that and make sure your seed is being planted deep enough into the cube you should only be able to see like a little hole in this. The seed cube has a split in it, right? Where you plant the seed. You should only be able to see the very tip of the seed when it's planted into the cube. Um, there should be a little hole where you can see the tip of the seed. I see a lot of people just putting it where half the seed is, you know, exposed. You want to plant it deep down in there. Um, it may not even be drowning out the seeds. It may be drying out the seeds, which is the two most common problems that you're drying, drown out or dried out. So make sure you plant the seed deep enough and your water levels um, at the prop, uh, appropriate level. Uh, Laquan A43, is ideal what you want to look for in the Hay Abbey app? Uh, yes, ideal and or good. Um, those are both adequate you know, environmental parameters. Either way, ideal and good are both good. JT, realistically, what would I need to add another, add other than the box? What I need to add other than the box? JT, realistically, the only other thing you're really gonna absolutely need is a pH, or four in one meter that can read your pH and EC, um, as well as pH up and pH down solutions. Um, those are really like the three crucial things that you'll need uh, to you know really grow optimally. You can have you know all kinds of other accessories and stuff, but those are the real essentials um, that you know you're going to need to get to grow right. Where we at? Wacko, does 420's door have a sensor? My door popped open and I did not realize I got up to 80. My door popped open and did not realize it and it got up to 89% humidity. If it does, can it be added? I would be willing to pay to have it added. Uh, the door does not have a sensor, no. None of the doors have a sensor. Um, the lock is basically a sensor, so the app will tell you when the door is open. Um, you know, if you look at the light or the environment, it'll say next to your light, dim door open. Um, so yeah, there's no really other sensor other than that. Coco, have I heard of Canatrol? Yes, I have heard of Canatrol, Coco. Jerome, strawberry cough, work three flower buds are crazy. That's what's up, Jerome. The Sang Sensei. What's up, Sensei? Glad you made it. 
Hello, Jay. Thank you for your wisdom. Is there any way to open my Abbey after the light goes off so the box light doesn't come on? I like to occasionally mist here, but I know that the light is bad. Um, unfortunately, there's not. Um, that's kind of the only way to do it. Um, one little hack you can do is if you open the door, you can kind of put, uh, you know, the metal key your door came with. If you put the key into the locking mechanism where the door tongue would normally um normally go it'll shut off the light and it'll make the door uh the box thinks the door is closed that's one way to go about it um other than that the only really way to keep the light off is to use a pro mode and you know if you enter pro mode it comes with a loss of support grow support the calendar how to um how to instructions and reminders so um those are kind of your two options with that jerome how to get moist old school buds would like to know uh, Jerome, what do you mean by moist old school buds? It's kind of a vague uh, description there. Um, your buds shouldn't really feel moist. I know a lot of times people in dispensaries or, you know, older heads want that real sticky icky. That means the flower's not dried properly. Um, you should feel a little tack. It should have, the buds should have a little give to them and be a little sticky, but they shouldn't be moist. That means your bud's not dried properly and it's not going to burn as well. Bad to the dad. What's up, bad to the dad? I like the name. How much better is a black edition at controlling order to compare to the OG? Bad to the dad. They're both the same. They both use these carbon filters right here, which get placed into the box just in front of the light. Um, and all the exhaust that goes through the box gets filtered through these uh, carbon filters. So it's exactly the same in the 420, the OG, and or black edition. They all use the same filtration. Murphy UK05. You guys are the go. We've needed this since it dropped. That's what's up. We're here, Murphy. Brian, how are the Kickstarter block boxes coming along? Oh, black boxes. Um, they're coming. They're supposed to ship out in about mid to late um, April, around 420. They're said to ship, so they're going well. P. God J, can I grow clones in the box? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, if you're talking about cutting clones and growing them, uh, yes, you can. You can root clones in the box, but you'll need a modified dome and tray. Um, the normal dome and tray is like 22 inches or something like that. It doesn't fit in the Hay Abbey. But um, I know they smell, sell shorter ones that are about, I think they have like a 12-inch one that would fit perfectly in here. Um, so it's definitely doable. Twin B, how's it going? I'm starting my next harvest tomorrow. I had a problem with a small water leak. I think it was from the bubbles. Uh, what do I have to worry about with lowering the water? Obviously, I will keep the roots wet. Um, not much, honestly. I mean, your water level should be a little bit lower anyways to keep that proper air barrier between the water level and the, you know, the root ball or where the roots originate. Um, as long as your water level isn't dropping drastically and you have a majority of the roots exposed to air, you should be fine. You shouldn't have any issues. Laquan A43, veg stage, what should the pH be? Laquan, your pH should stay stable throughout uh, the whole grow between 5.5 and 6.0. You want to pH your water daily. P. God J, or can I only grow with seeds? No, P. God, you can definitely grow with clones. I prefer clones. Um, it saves you time and you get a lot more um, consistent you know, results as far as genetics. Like I said, when you buy like a pack of 10 seeds, there's going to be quite a bit of genetic variation within that pack of 10 seeds. So um, I prefer clones. Um, they save you time. You know, you don't have to germinate them. You just put them in and it's basically ready to rock. Wesley G, I had a little accident in my abbey. The mist from the humidifier got on some of my leaves and changed the color. And it's flowing and it's an auto. Will the plant be okay? I think the light burn got one bare branch. Yeah, it should be fine. But, you know, once those leaves are whatever is burned is burned, the plant's not going to be able to repair any burning like that. Once it's necrotic or dead, um, you know, it can't repair that. Um, but it should be fine moving forward. Jezachronic. Hi, have you ever thought of making a self-watering organic living soil conversion? I think this would be a great idea. Well, Jezza, uh, stay tuned. Um, put your email and subscribe to our newsletter because we may have something in the works. Stroker A74, hello from Ohio. What up, Ohio? Coco, should I use Canatrol? What do you think about the unit? Uh, 
yeah, I just counter trolls are really cool. Uh, I, I believe you're talking about the drying unit, right? Drying and curing unit. Um, they're really cool. They're just expensive. Um, I, I mean, if you can afford it and you want to get for it, then go for it. I don't see why you wouldn't. Bassman or Baseman 4B? I don't know which one. If you're a fisherman or you're a base junkie. <laughs> uh, which does the car, which way does the carbon filters go in? Great question. So you see there's two sides of the filter. One has a tab that says Abbey. The side that has the Abbey tab will go upwards pointing towards your ceiling. That way the pre-filter, this little um, fabric pre-filter should be sitting on the bottom. Great question. All right, what else we got? P God J, does the unit keep a lot, uh, take up a lot of electricity? Uh, P God J, no, it does not. It has like a, I think 180 watt max output, which is really, really low. So it uses very little energy and that's peak output. So, you know, you're not gonna use that um, or very rarely gonna use that much electricity. Jagbomb420, what up, what up, Jagbomb? How often should I use a hydro guard and how much? Uh, Jag bomb. I like to add it in at every water change. Um, if you're in flower change, every water change is adequate. If you're in the veg stage, I like to add it at every water change and once in between every water change. So right about every three days is is optimal. It just you know the hydro guard is is a bacteria supplement and it helps basically eats away the bad bacteria that could be infecting the roots. That's how it keeps your roots clean. So in order to keep those bacteria levels up especially with, you know, highly concentrated nutrients like Abbey nutrients, um, you're going to want to add it in regularly. So like every three days is perfect. Twin D, awesome. Thank you. Also, what is the main incentive jumping from OG to the Black Edition? Dumb question. Can I upgrade the light in the future? Twin D, it's not a dumb question. There's no such thing. Um, there's a couple advantages. One, the light is more powerful. It uses a UV spectrum and it uses an infrared spectrum in the light as well. Um, the UV, the IR, as well as having a more powerful light, is going to not only increase yields, but it's going to, um, the UV and IR are going to increase cannabinoid production. It also helps keep the box sanitary. Uh, the UV and IR fight off any pathogens, et cetera, in the box, which is really cool. Um, another really big advantage of the Black Edition is having a USB hub where you can directly plug in three, uh, multiple up to three um, accessories and use them in the box at the same time. Crystal blue, can I turn, oh, sorry, Twin D, one more thing. No, you cannot upgrade the light itself. Um, all three boxes kind of have a different plug and or power configuration, so you can't swap lights in between each one. Crystal blue, can I turn the light on? I just put my third germinated seed, uh, my first two died. Um, crystal blue, so if you're ready to turn the light on, basically you've planted the seed into the cube, um, you need to go into the calendar and follow the instructions in the calendar. Once you tell the app via the calendar that you've planted your seed on, seed into the, um, the cube, put it in the basket, etc. cetera, um, it'll be dark for the first 64 hours. And after that, the light will turn on and run its normal schedule. Crystal blue, 64 hour darkness. What it basically does is it allows the taproot to, to elongate and start to take hold in the foam cube. So uh, it may not seem right, but you know that's kind of what you want to do. You want to elongate that taproot um, and let it take hold, start to take hold into the cube. That way it can sprout properly. Bob and Weaving, what's up boss man? Was thinking of doing some fresh frozen bubble hash with my lower buds. Have you have any experience with hash? Bob and Weaving, yeah, I have a lot of experience with uh, bubble bags and rosin. I've done it quite a bit. Um, if you have any questions about it, I'm here to help. Mr. Matt Martinez, do you all have CBD hemp flower recipes as well? Uh, Mr. Martin, Mr. Matt Martinez, it's going to be the same recipe or, you know, process as growing cannabis. It's the same thing. You're going to feed the plant the same, take care of the plant the same way. So, yes, we do. In short, yes, we do. <laughs> Stoke 420, what's happening? The Sang Sensei, pretty sure I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask. I feel like I could rotate my plant by turning the cup. So is that bad for the plant? It would help access the back of the plant. Yes, you absolutely can do that. Um, the Sang Sensei, absolutely. One thing you got to be look, you have to look out for though, is the root mass. Um, once, you know, you're into flowering, your roots are going to take up a lot of space in the reservoir. 
And if you rotate that basket, you may damage some of the roots, which, you know, you don't want to damage the roots. So you can do that. Just be careful, you know, with the roots when you rotate that basket. Great question. Sunny MN, Sunny Minnesota. Is it possible to grow two autoflower seeds in one Hayabi box, hoping to get a larger yield with less maintenance? It's possible, but not recommended. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have two seeds that are going to compete or two seeds and or plants that are going to compete with each other. Um, and neither of them are going to reach their full potential. So you're better off just, um, you know, growing one seed and taking really good care of it. Um, the two plant thing is not, like I said, they're just going to compete with each other for water and nutrients. They're going to have their roots entangled and it's going to restrict water access, nutrient access, etc. So uh, you'd be better off just growing one really healthy plant. Let's see where we at. Natty Phil. I know the idea is to check the trichomes, but I'm curious if you have found a sweet spot as to when these trichomes are about ready to flush, like we eight or nine, et cetera. Uh, typically, you know, in most strains, right at about like week eight and a half, the trichomes are ready to start flushing. Um, that's, you know, I would say a majority of strains, but there is some variance in there. You, if you can't view the trichomes, just check the hairs on the buds, the stigmas. Um, once those hairs turn orange, then you're ready to flush. Um, of course, the lower the lower bud stigmas or hairs are going to mature less quickly than the tops. So you really want to just get an idea of the top three quarters of the plant. Um, you know, once you get about 80% of those hairs orange, you're good to start flushing, Phil. Jagbomb 420. I see a lot of people with strip lights on the sides. Is there any that you would recommend? Uh, Jagbomb, sorry, I do not have any, you know, experience with the side lighting or supplemental lighting. I can't really give a recommendation on that. Sorry. Twin D. Nice. I bought the Hey Abby Wi-Fi power strip. Oh, very good, Twin D. Uh, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a step a bit to make a hole for a thing like the can fan, humidifier, camera, etc. In ideas for placement of the hole under size, I'll make sure it's sealed with the uh, grommet. Um, I'm not sure about that. I would assume, I think it's a half or three eighths inch cord, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Sorry. Careful with drilling a hole into your box as well. Um, that may void warranty if you're still under warranty. So you may want to reach out to uh, customer service about that. Savage Ways 81. Can I use other nutrients besides the ones I get from the company? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Savage Ways. Um, you can use any nutrients you prefer or, or like. Uh, one tip I have about that though, Savage Ways, is I recommend using a salt-based nutrient. Mr. Matt Martinez, got it, appreciate it. No problem, Mr. Matt. TB, is the best way to grow auto, is the best way to grow auto flowers or pheno uh, or photo, I'm assuming you mean. Uh, I personally like photo period strains. Auto flowers are just a little tricky and they can be finicky to grow. There's a lot less control with auto flowers, which some growers like, you know, they like to be hands off and just let the plant do its thing. Um, I just can't do that. You know, I have to try to optimize everything I do. <laughs> everything, I mean, from typing to growing to my workouts to everything, I just try to optimize every aspect. So, um, you know, with autoflowers, you can't really train the plant. So you can't really train or top it or do certain things to it. Um, it flowers on its own, obviously. That's why it's called auto flowering. So you can't tell it when to flower like you can a photo period. So I personally like photo periods. Uh, that's just my preference. Crystal Blue, thank you. No problem, Crystal. Neki Scott, can I start a seed in dirt and then transfer to the Abbey for hydro? If so, if so how tall should it be before you transplant? Neki Scott, I don't recommend it. Um, anytime you're moving from soil to hydro or into the Abbey, it's just really hard on the plant. Um, you're literally ripping out the roots and uprooting the plant and causing a, lot, causing a lot of damage. And then you're putting it into a system which relies on the roots for the plant to live. So you can do that, but it's, especially in a seedling state, I really don't recommend it. Um, if you're going to do it, I would wait till you have at least two or three sets of leaves um, and you're more in the clone stage. You have like a clone size plant where it's like six to eight inches tall has an established root and leaf system. I appreciate you, Natty Phil, my guy Phil. Twin D, good to know. Thanks for the help. Great live. No problem, Twin D. 
no problem tv all right y'all in about 10 15 minutes we're gonna do our normal giveaway for those of you who don't know we usually do a giveaway during the lives so i mean think about it you got a discount code you have an opportunity to win free stuff and we announced the spring break sale i mean and you're getting knowledge about growing it's you know this is where it's at right here What's up, Twin D? What question do you have? Papa P, is it possible to add a water chiller to the Abbey? I constantly have to lower the water temps even after getting the tank cover. I use bottles every day. Um, yeah, you can. I know there's some small aquarium chillers that you can add into the Abbey. Um, I haven't yet messed around with anything like that. Uh, I typically just use the frozen water bottle trick, but yes, uh, uh, there is some, you know, small uh, chillers you can use. Yeah, Twin D, we're going to do a giveaway in like 15 minutes or so. Stay tuned. Saying Sensei, I am pretty sure I know the answer question, but I must ask. I feel like I could rotate my plant. Oh, Yeah. Sorry, I think I answered that already, Sensei. You can, you definitely can rotate the plant and or the basket. Just be careful with the roots because when you twist the basket and move it around, um, especially when the plant's larger and, you know, you're into flowering, et cetera, um, the roots you're going to have to rotate with it. If not, you may shear or cut the roots and damage the roots when you turn it. So just be careful with the roots uh, when you turn the plant. Waco, the knowledge is well worth the price of admission. <laughs> That's right, Waco. Stoke 420. The show is a must see. That's right, H. Who was it to ask about uh, doing bubble hash? If you have any questions about that, you know, I have quite a bit of experience in making hash, doing fresh frozen hash, making rosin, etc. So. TJ, uh, I'll have the discount, our, di our, excuse me, our discount, our um, Discord code or our Discord link. It'll be posted right now. Just give me a second. If you guys aren't a member of Discord, make sure you join the Discord. It's really cool. It's a great, uh, great community of, you know, Abbey growers and growers. And there's a lot of good information and tips and tricks and all kinds of stuff on there. So if you guys aren't a member of the Discord, you know, join our Discord. Shoot me a message when you do join. Twin D, I had a problem with small bugs that ruined my last harvest. It was my fault. I changed the locations. I'm going to use neem oil. Any thoughts? Yeah, Twin D, neem oil is really great. Um, just make sure you dilute it properly. Uh, make sure you pH it before you spray it. And make sure you only spray when the lights are off. Um, neem oil is really good. Uh, like I said, you need to dilute it, though, or it's going to create your bugs are going to be greasy. Um, if you don't want to use neem oil, I have a really great product. It's called IPM by Athena. Um, it's, it's really great. It's organic, it uses, uh, essential oils, etc., and it'll kill anything off. I'm curious to know what kind of bugs you had though, Twin D. TJ, there's a dis there's the, uh, discord link for you. Go ahead and join our discord. Stoke 420. Can I use a battery op operated air pump when the power goes out? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry for funny. Um, that's the most important thing is to keep those roots um, oxygenated and aerated. Um, it's okay if the light goes out for, you know, a while or days. Just try to keep the root, uh, the roots oxygenated and submerged in the water. Bassman 4B, how many of the extras can you use in the 420 box as in camera, humidifier, extra fan, etc.? cetera? Um, so you can only use one at a time. Um, the only way to use multiple is either by the OG box where you can plug in three or you can use the R300 smart power strip. Um, and that'll allow you to use multiple. The power strip connects to the box and it allows you to use set points or timers to turn the accessories on or off. 
The saying sensei, thanks, my friend. I had a short connection issue. Love that, ABC. No problem, the saying sensei. I'm happy to help. Thank you for being here and all your support. Brian, what would the advantage be in going with the drip irrigation over DWC? Uh, Brian, drip irrigation, um, it allows more control of the plant. You know, you can irrigate and kind of control the plant via inputs and irrigation. Um, but there is quite a bit more knowledge that's needed to run the drip irrigation. You know, you got to kind of know how much and how to determine how much to feed your plants and or when to feed your plants. Um, and you got to have kind of some, you know, some idea of the medium you use, whether it be rock wool or um, cocoa or peat based um, blocks, whatever you choose to use. Um, you're going to have to have some irrigation knowledge and some knowledge of the medium you choose to use. But um, some some broad benefits, more control of the plant, um, higher yields, better quality, less stretch of the plant. Um, I mean, do I need to say more? <laughs> Wacko, looking to buy a battery backup. What is the voltage required for the 420? Ooh, that's a good question. Voltage. I'm not sure. Let me see if I can get a quick quick peek. Uh, it's 110 volts. It says 110 slash 240. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's, you know, obviously a 110. Spy 64, my door latch is really tight since changing the seal. Can you describe how to adjust the latch? Spy 64. So the, the lock or the latch, you probably want to adjust the lock first, um, to adjust the lock, there's three screws that hold it in, right? The lock's right here on the left side of the box. There's three screws that hold it in. Just loosen the screws, um, and then you're going to want to push the lock towards you, towards the door where the door opens. You're going to push it towards you a little bit, retighten the screws, and it should help you, you know, create a seal, you know, but a, a, a looser, I guess, fit, I guess you call it. Um, you know, you may need to fill around a little bit with that placement. Twin D, I think they were aphids. I would change water at night. The OG temp control shed. I think the bright lights would attract the bugs at night. I don't know. But my yield was four, almost five ounces for the first time. I'm excited to start again. That's what's up. That's a solid yield. Um, yeah, aphids are no joke. Um, <laughs> aphids are no joke. I've had my fair share of aphids in the past. Um, I got a whole shipment of teens from a, a new facility I was running. I got about 800 plants, close to 900 plants, and they all had aphids on them. Um, and boy, was that a headache for me. <laughs> so I know the feeling. Um, neem oil won't really kill aphids, though. I, if you're going to have aphids, I would definitely use IPM, the IPM product by Athena. Um, it'll be much much better for aphids. Um, one thing, Twin D, since you did have bugs, you're really going to want to sanitize and wipe down the whole interior of your box. If there's any larva living um, if anywhere in that box, you could reignite that pest infestation really quickly. And, it's, you know, it's going to be a perpetual cycle. So um, use some sanitizing wipes or bleach wipes and wipe down the entire interior, interior of the box. Pull out the reservoir, wipe under the reservoir, wipe the, around the reservoir, the reservoir lid, all the walls, the top of the lights. Uh, the fan, the back fan module, everything. You're going to wipe everything down with that. All right, where are we at? TJ, should I purchase the added humidifier or the built-in one is good enough? TJ, there is no humidifier built into the box. Um, if you want to get a humidifier, definitely go with the uh, Hayabi Smart humidifier. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Twindy. Um I don't, I, you know, I can't really tell exactly what they are. Most, most pests and or bugs are going to live on the underside of leaves. So um, make sure you sanitize your box. One funky robot. I'm having trouble starting a seed in the OG. I followed the tutorial video and it's been two weeks. The seed hasn't sprouted yet. Any tips? Um, one, make sure your seed's planted deep enough. Like I mentioned, um, you should barely be able to see the, teeds, the seed tip 
from the hole in the slit where you planted the seed. You don't want any of the seed exposed to air. Uh, make sure your water level is adequate. It's about halfway up the cube. And make sure when you change the water, you're pouring the fresh water over top of the, the foam cube. That way the whole thing is staying saturated. Um, try those tips out, one funky robot. Twin D IPM, awesome. Sanitize the crap out of it. I was singing the same thing. Thanks. No problem. The saying sensei, I would love a Hey Abby sticker the size of the knob with the Abby Witcher Fairy. Oh, that'd be pretty dope. Great idea. Eric, I bought the fan and humidifier, but only have one plug. Is there a splitter? Eric, no, nah, there's no splitter. Even if you were to purchase a splitter, um, it's it'll only support one one accessory at a time. Jagbomb 420. Is it okay to use something like Root Riot instead of the foam cubes? Absolutely, Jagbomb. Um, I personally like using Rockwell. Root Riots are really good. Um, the only issue I've seen with Root Riots is it's they once the roots really grow and start to become thick and robust, um, the Root Riots tend to break apart a little bit since they're a little more uh, aerated or fluffy, more delicate than, like, say, Rockwell. Um, so you may find little pieces here and there in your reservoir. Just keep that in mind. Don't freak out if you see a little <laughs> piece of your root riot plug in, in your reservoir. Miss D, we have a sale 420 again. Uh, Miss D, yes, we have a sale when you buy two, two 420 editions. It's a spring break sale. You buy two 420 editions, you save $100. Holbrook, 30, 330. Do you have to know the strain that you're trying to grow? Uh, not necessarily, um, but, you know, it helps. Um, but, no, if you don't know, then when you start your grow, just type in, I don't know. That's fine. Miss D, we love you. June J, are there extra lights we can add to the Abbey to illuminate the lower part of the Abbey? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's all kinds of USB lights or, you know, side lightings that you can buy. Um, someone, I think Phil recommended some. I have no experience with that, so I can't really recommend or comment. Stoke420, told my Abby OG to breathe, and man, you can hear those fans doing the same. Yeah, that's right. GX Delay, waiting for the pH meter to ship. All right, guys, we're going to start the giveaway in a couple minutes here, so stay posted. You'll see directions pop up in the chat. Just uh, follow directions and put whatever the chat says into the chat box or the message says into the chat box, and you're entered into the giveaway. We're giving away Hey Abby rolling trays, so they're really cool. Um, stained wood trays for rolling, keeping your grinded materials in place while you roll up. Really nice, really Abby branded, sleek, clean, very cool. All right, there it is, guys. Check that message. Type it down in the chat, and you're entered into the giveaway. Twin D, I have an OG. I want to run the fan and the camera. How do you advise? You just advise against drilling the hole. Any ideas about how to run the power into the box? Door seal through the hole in the bottom. So, Twin D, uh, on the hinge side of the door, so when you open the door, right, this is the hinge side. It opens this way. Um, Towards the bottom of the box, there's like a little gap on the hinge side on the bottom. So like the bottom corner hinge side, you can feed wires through that. I've done it before um, when I've tested boxes and text, tested um, other products. You know, when I was running CO2 in the, trying to run CO2 in the Abbey, I had a CO2 meter in the box and I ran the cord under that. Um, there's just enough space to fit some, some wires through there. Pop out right.
My favorite strain to grow in the Hay Abbey. Good question, Holbrook. Um, so far, I have to say the sticky buns. I've only grown about four strains multiple times. I've done uh, Gorilla Glue, Lemon Cherry Gelato, Berry Gelato, Sticky Buns, and Banana OG. So far, I like the sticky buns. Um, I re I've liked it a lot. I'm not really big on like designer or dessert strains, but the sticky buns has been a keeper for me. Um, I'm really excited in this box right here. I have a Wi-Fi uh, 43 plant that I'm growing. Um, so I'm really, so I'm sorry, this box over here, not this one. Uh, I have a Wi-Fi 43 seedling that's getting ready for transplant. I'm really excited about that strain. It's one of my all-time favorite strains. <laughs> Phil, I'm not trying to push sticky buns on you, but it's a, it was a great strain. I mean, it just hit all the notes for me. Um, typically with like dessert strains, like, I don't know, you know, purple punch, gelatos, cake strains, those kind of things. They're good, but they just lack the punch that an OG or Kush strain has. Uh, I find myself having to go back and keep smoking as opposed to like a Kush or a good OG. You know, I take a couple rips and I'm set for a while. Um, that's my, the only thing I don't like about those dessert and designer strains. Um, with the sticky buns, it's kind of the same, but I just find it a little more on the heavy side. So that's that's one reason that I really like the sticky buns. Yeah, Holbrook, I'm a big OG fan, man. OG's top dog for me. <laughs> Waka doesn't want a game. He just won. I think you've won twice now, haven't you? Oh, just once. Okay, my bad. All right, guys. I think we're getting a, a ready to announce the winner. If there's any last-minute entries, get it in now. Sunny MN. The highest potency strain I've grown was a strain called Spritzer. Um, and the highest yielding strain was Atomic Apple. I got like close to four pounds of light with the Atomic Apple and the spritzer tested at 33.8%. Uh, All right, guys, we're going to announce the winner now. Let's see who we got. Best of luck to everybody. All right. Congrats, Twin D and O-Niner Hester. Make sure you guys send your shipping info, including your first and last name. Send it over to support at heyabby.com, and we'll happily send out your prizes. Thank you guys for being a part of the giveaway. Thank you for entering. Thank you, everybody, for asking your questions and being a part of these lives. Um, I know I say it time and time again, but when you guys ask questions, it, um, it prompts me to answer those questions. And even people who aren't curious or aren't, aren't asking questions, they're able to retain and learn from me answering your guys' questions. So it betters the community. When you guys are here, you guys are asking questions and want to know stuff, and it helps everybody. Um, so I really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody who's been a part of the uh, live stream. I'll be back again live Thursday. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Take advantage of the discount code and the sale we have going on. I appreciate you guys. Also, the Grow Coach podcast, guys. Uh, I got a couple messages about it. I'm sorry. It's kind of on pause right now. Spotify did something with my account. I don't know what the deal is. I'm trying to get it figured out, but they're really poor answering my messages. So as soon as I get it posted, I have an episode recorded, ready to go. I just can't post it for some reason because I can't get into the account. So um, stay tuned for that. I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Grower Jay signing out.